Hello and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial video. In today's video, we are going to be picking up right where we left off last time, and we will be applying, um, we will be actually sculpting this terrain and going over all the different sculpting options in Unreal Engine 5. We will start by selecting the landscaped mode. Now, after we have created our landscape, we can utilize uh, the sculpt mode tool to customize it. Uh, the process of sculpting a landscape involves a variety of tools that can modify the underlying height map. These tools range from the simple sculpt tool that paints height values using a brush and a strength scale to many other tools that may use complex algorithms to apply interesting effects to the height map, such as erosion. Each, of, each tool has a set of properties that determines how the tool affects the landscape. Tool Workflow once you've created your landscape, you will have access to other features of the landscape tool. To use sculpting, select the Sculpt Mode tab. Once selected, the sculpt options will become available for choosing the type of sculpting along with the brush style and falloff type you would like to use to apply their effects to your landscape using height map strokes. The landscape tools brush defines the shape and size of the area of the landscape that will be affected uh, by either sculpting or painting. Brushes can have different shapes, sizes, and falloffs. Brushes should be a similar concept to anyone who has had experience using Photoshop or a similar image editing application. You can set the brush type and falloff either in the sculpt or paint tab of the landscape toolbar. Settings can be adjusted in the landscape panel. The different properties are the brush size, which determines the size of the brush in Unreal Engine, including fall off. Within this area, the brush will have at least some effects. So, you can make a bigger brush size, you can make a smaller brush size. And that uh, determines the area of effect. So let's just say here, you can either have small hole, or small bump, or big bump. I just uh, right-clicked for that, but I'll be going over more of those later. I'm just going to press Ctrl-Z to undo this real quick. Brush falloff determines the percentage from the brush's extents where the falloff should begin. Essentially, this determines how hard the brush's edges are. A falloff of 0 will mean the brush will have full effect throughout with hard edges. A falloff of 1 will mean the brush will only have a full effect near its center, and the effect will be reduced throughout the entire area to the edge. So... Say so yeah, I set this to zero, it makes that, I set it to one, it is a much more gradual, if you look at these two. And I'll just undo those again. Uh, use clay brush. Using a clay brush uh, is different from using other types of brushes um, in subtle ways that kind of make it feel more like you're working with clay. Uh, but I'm just going to undo those and unselect that for the time being. The circle brush applies the current tool in a circular area with fall off defined both numerically and by type. Circle brush fall off type. Smooth, a linear fall off that has been smoothed to round off the sharp edges where the fall off begins and ends. So I'm gonna set this to about a point five around there. And smooth fall off is what I've been using up until this point. It generates a shape that kind of looks like this. Uh, linear, uh, a sharp linear fall off without rounded edges. So let me uh, close you that and just make sure I'm looking directly at one spot. You see how that looks kind of like a cone with a with its top cut off. Uh, sphere, a half. Ellipsoid shape fall off that begins smoothly and ends sharply. So it's hard to get these to work with me sometimes. So here's an example of uh, what that looks like. It starts off very sharp and then it kind of smooths towards the top. It kind of looks like a bulb. And then there is the opposite, which is a tip, uh, which kind of looks Kind of looks like one of those like old air, old time air horns. But if I just undo all those, okay. Now when it comes to brush type, there is uh, alpha. 
The alpha brush is similar to the pattern brush, but instead of tiling the texture across the landscape as you paint, it orients the brush texture in the direction of your painting and drags the shape as you move your mouse cursor. Here's a kind of an example of what that looks like just using its uh, default texture. Just kind of as I'm orienting my mouse, I can't really show this to you because I don't have like a mouse cam, but as I'm orienting my mouse, it kind of moves it around. And you can get a shape that kind of looks similar to this. Um, obviously, you can modify what that texture looks like, but like, I mean, it's not a bad mountain range. Maybe a bit of smoothing, some better lighting. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of what that looks like. Uh, there's a texture. You can assign this texture to any texture in the content browser. Like say, I, mean, I could assign a bricks. So I don't know if that would change anything. I think it uses the alpha of the texture, if I'm not mistaken. So I honestly don't think that changes anything unless I use something with an alpha. Maybe it uses transitions from light to dark. No, no clue. Um, texture channel uh, sets the alpha brush content from the data to the corresponding channel of the texture that is currently assigned. So you can say if it's the red, blue, green, or alpha here. So I guess that answers my uh, little tangent. Brush size, same as before. Uh, use clay brush, same as before. Pattern. The pattern brush allows you to use an arbitrary shape for the brush by selecting a simple color channel from a texture to use as the alpha for the brush. The texture pattern is tiled as the brush is painted. For example, if I use this, it would uh, tile that across the landscape. Okay, that's actually really interesting. But yeah, it would like bring that into more effect across the landscape. So if I want to make like a curve, I guess I could use this. Kind of sharp, but then again, this texture wasn't explicitly made for that, so that kind of says why. Uh, here you can use a texture, you can change the texture channel, the brush size, the brush fall off if you want to use a clay brush. And then there is the, uh, the things that are new are the texture scale, which sets the size of the sample texture in its relation to the surface landscape. So if I, say, move that up, that makes these curves bigger. If I move it down, these curves get smaller across the landscape. But you can see that they very clearly tile. Uh, texture rotation, that allows, well, I mean, it's not really visible here because it's a sphere, but that would just rotate the texture. Uh, and then texture pan UV sets the offset of the sample texture to the landscape. So texture pan... Uh, again, I guess they're not really visible because this isn't the best example, but, you know. Um, so those are some of the different uh, sculpt modes. And then, uh, with your sculpting tool selected, you can now use the following controls to start sculpting your landscape. Up until now, I've just been saying that I've been doing it. But now we'll get into how you would do it. I'm going to start with the smooth fade-off circular brush. Tool strength of 0.5, which is how fast it changes stuff. Uh, this of 2500, uh, just because. And I'm going to do a fall off of 0.7. Oh, wait, no, a fall off of uh, 0.3. Yes, because you have to work. So, left mouse button uh, raises. And then if you want to subtract, you hold shift in left mouse button. That will lower your uh, that'll lower your texture. Uh, you can use Control Z to undo, Control Y to redo. So that concludes our video for today. If you like what you saw, please don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions for me, feel free to leave them either in the comments or in my Discord channel. In the next episode, we will be going over landscape material creation in Unreal Engine. I hope you guys have a good day and bye.